Hey guys, Danny Ray, LifetelleSalesMentor.com. I uh, hope you guys are all doing well. Uh, I want to spend some time with you tonight and go over a few things, uh, what's been going on and what we got lined up for the masterclass and uh, some of the things that are going to be, you know, um, added to it. Okay, I'm going to go over that as well in this video. Um, but I really want to focus on, um, I did, made a TikTok video earlier, and I want to really focus on the circle of life of a life insurance agent. All right, and the the journey that life insurance agents go on. Okay, and I think it's important because you know becoming a life insurance agent is not something you guys one day at two years old is like I want to be a life insurance agent one day, right? It's more so most of the time it's it's derived from you know let's be honest. I mean, me I'm gonna I'll, I'll say how, what it was for me. Okay. Um, I was always passionate about helping people. I've always been that way. Um, I think it's because when I grew up, I had a single mom. Okay, I seen my mom work four jobs. Okay, I seen her probably close her eyes a few times from age five to 15. Uh, she raised me and my brother, okay, by herself, the best she could. And it was a, it was a during a time that, you know, single parents, Single moms, especially, not even parents, moms, uh, were frowned upon, okay? And I remember in 1978, I was only five years old, my mother purchased her first home, or her, I'm sorry, not her first home, her only home, okay? Um, and I seen how hard she worked, and she really worked hard, guys. I mean, to the point where she, she, she destroyed her body in her, in her life, you know? That's why she died at 69, um, with cardiovascular disease, 17 stents, taking, you know, 18, 20 meds a day. Beautiful on the outside, just a train wreck on the inside. And it's all the years she worked so hard. So that's, um, that's another video that I'd like to speak to about balance. But, you know, you, you got to really got to focus on, I say this because where I come from, passion. And when, in the 80s, when my grandparents passed away, okay, my grandmother passed away in 85, I do believe, if I remember right, and my grandfather in 87, all right, and um, they were, um, you know, I see my mother struggle, okay, and scrape together money to help their funeral costs with some of her brothers and, and you know, and sisters. So I know the value of that, what that means. I seen it at a very young age, you know, I was, uh, I was 10, 11, 12 years old. All right, so I had that passion to always, you know, I always knew I'd be successful whatever I did. My mother, my parents used to ask me, and my mother used to ask me when I was young, what are you going to be when you grow up? I'm going to be, I'm going to be rich, I'm going to be loaded, because in my heart, I felt I would be, because I'd find my way. I always wanted to be a stockbroker, and I became one, all right, before, you know, I got into the insurance industry. So, you know, I, I want to speak to this about, because, you know, most agents don't have that journey up until the point where, you know, they, they became an agent, okay? A lot of times, you know, it's, most of the time, it's, it's for the money, commissions and you know um, oh I can write I can make a thousand dollars a day or I can make two thousand dollars a day you know in some cases you know a, a few thousand dollars a day so most insurance agents get in the business because of greed because they want to make money right and they want to supply for them you know provide for their family all right so so I want to talk about the circle of life of an agent okay uh, there's a reason why 90 percent of the agents are out of the business within one or two years Okay, that's why Cody Askins has, uh, you know, the 8% nation. Because 8% of the, statistically, 8% of the agents uh, stick with the business. And the, and the ones that stick with it and go through the trials and tribulations and go through the adversity, um, come out on the other side and usually reap the rewards for the rest of their life. Okay, um, so I want to speak to you about the life, uh, the circle of life of a life insurance agent. Now, again, you, you, you know, you get into the business and you, you know, you're, uh, you know, you usually start face to face, you know, and, and you're knocking on doors and you, you got to have thick skin, right? You got to, you got to um, overcome objections. You got to make people feel comfortable. And, and in this business to be an ultra successful agent, all right, I feel, and this is just my opinion, uh, people that go through a tremendous amount of adversity early in their life, okay, will become great life insurance agents, final expense agents, Medicare agents, because you'll be able to relate with people more. Okay. You understand their situation. You understand what they're going through. You know, I've had a tremendous amount of adversity at young in my life. 
very young in my life. Okay, um, you're talking to somebody that didn't get past ninth grade in high school. All right, um, always a hard worker though. Worked, you know, building swimming pools when I was 17, 18 years old. Working my way up to running an entire maintenance crew on Long Island for one of the biggest pool uh, companies in Long Island, Arthur Edwards, where I ran the entire maintenance division. And I was 18, 19 years old. So I always had ambition. I always worked my ass off. Okay, um, also coming from a background where drug addiction. Okay, I had two stints of rehab in my 20s. You know, it was just part of the thing that I, you know, was a broker and making money and ups and downs and so on and so forth. You know, um, it, it was something that was very ordinary back then. Okay, so um, I feel, I, you know, a lot of adversity. You know, uh, my first marriage and stuff like that. You know, I got divorced. You know, um, I lost my, my daughter Emma in 2006 on my birthday. You know, um, so, so I feel that a, a lot of times that, you know, you build up um, thick skin and you learn the trials and tribulations in life and the adversity that you have in life. And eventually, you know, you can relate more to people's situations. OK, so when you start out in the business and you're gleaming green, you know, you door knock and you're doing your thing. And there's a lot of adversity, a lot of learning lessons, okay? You're broke, you know? You, 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 you question why you're doing what you're doing. You, you think, you know, um, is this for me? I mean, how many times have who, the people are watching this right now, all you agents out there, um, how many times have you said that to yourself? I mean, how many times did established agents say that to themselves? I'm sure, I'm sure I say it a few times a year. You know, am I doing the right thing? Should I switch gears and go do something else? But I always lead back to my passion. I always lead back to what I love to do, and that's truly helping people. You know, helping seniors, man. I, mean, I lost my grandparents at a very young age. Um, I, when I speak to seniors on the phone, I, I, I treat them like they're my grandparents. How do you treat your grandparents, right? Um, I care. I passionately care. I just want to do the best for them. I want them to be proud of me, okay? Um, clients are loyal to you. Okay, you have to be loyal back, and I'll give that in a second. So when you start off in the business, you know, your trials and tribulations, you're going through your business, and, you know, you're, you, you, you're, getting, you make, you're doing 10 steps forwards, 9 steps back, 10 steps forwards, 7 steps back, you know, and you're trying to gain some momentum. And finally, when you do, you go ahead and, you know, you get a chargeback that comes in, you know. Um, one thing about this business, you know, you can never go ahead and spend the money that, that you didn't make yet. Right. In other words, what I mean by that, you write a three thousand dollar case, you're going out to the bar on a Friday and, and ringing up a credit card bill when the money didn't hit the bank yet. So, I mean, that right there is something that a lot of agents do, you know, and what that does is that if, if the client falls through or your, your, you know, the, their, their, their payment doesn't go through, it's a deflating thing. And that's one of the reasons why a lot of agents don't make it is because they just don't get that traction to get the momentum. Now, what I mean by that is, you know, as an agent, you're going through the motions, you're going through getting good at the business, uh, being able to, you know, pretty much... Uh, let's say, say it the way it is. You're, you're, you're on the job training, right? You're, you're learning as you're going along. You're, you're on the fly, right? And you, you know, sometimes, and you put a lot of pressure on yourself too in the beginning. So you're going through everything, and next thing you know, you get some traction, and you, you start writing them more deals, and you know, you know, and then you're doing good. Now you got dozens of clients in your book, and then you know, you know, chargebacks come in, deflate you a little bit, and then you next thing you know, you chuck it along, and you start getting that system going. Right, you've got you find a good lead vendor and so on and so forth. If you're in telesales, I do 100% telesales, but I'm very keen on the face to face as well. So you're getting your motion going and and, and you're getting some momentum. Next thing you know, you know you you got the business. You know you make your first hundred thousand dollars or 150, and you, you're trucking along. You know, next thing you know, you got hundreds of clients. Right, in the next couple of years, you get you got a hundred, you know, a couple few hundred clients in the books. You know, 500 clients in the books. And you're trucking along, you know, and then a couple of years goes by and, and you're really killing it. In other words, you're writing so much business, you know, that, you know, chargebacks you don't even feel, right? It's just one of the it's part of it. Chargeback to me is, is uh, thanks for the key, thanks for the interest free loan. That's fine. We're, we, we're in a, we, we work in a cash flow business, okay? So it's really important. Okay, then you get to a certain point where now the renewals, you, you, you know, obviously in the beginning, you don't feel the renewals, right? You really don't, you know, right? It takes a few years until you're like, wow, wow, I, I made a few thousand dollars this month in renewals. Wow, that's pretty cool. And then you truck it along. Before you know it, you know, years go by, you know, countless days going through the, you know, grinding it out, you know, thousands of days. And 
Before you know it, you're, you're, you got thousands of clients, you know, thousands of clients. And then you wake up one day and you say to yourself, you know what? Um, I'm, I don't really need the prospect anymore. I can, I can build my book. I mean, think about it. You know, you have 4,000 clients and you get 10% of them give you a referral. One out of 10, that's 400 new clients. You know what I mean? I mean, you get really good at that. The next thing you know, you can literally double the size of your book every single year. Okay, what me and Lisa have been doing is, is now we're at that level where we don't really need the prospect anymore. But when you have this, we, I've built this, gen, this lead generation system that um, is just flawless. I'm talking years of tweaking and building and tweaking and building where I hit a switch and I can get as many leads as I want. I can get 100 leads in a week and I can get, or I can get 1,000 leads in a week. Okay, and, it, 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 and it's a, a tremendous asset that I have that um, right now, it's just laying dormant right now, okay? Um, especially going forward this year, me and Lisa are going to be focused wholeheartedly on our book of business, getting referrals, cross-selling, calling every single client, the thousands that we have, me and her personally calling them every single day, and just the service of getting them update you know update their beneficiaries did you move there's so many different reasons that you can call a client that you can spur a conversation okay you got to remember that they entrusted in you and they're loyal to you because they bought a policy from you okay you have to be loyal back to them okay and it's about servicing i can tell you right now 97 out of, of 100 agents in this business they're a one and done deal they write a policy and they're done. They don't even call the client again. And, and that right there is disheartening because you're leaving so much money on the table. But not only that, just doing the right thing. They need you. They, 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 they're, they're, they bought a policy from you because they need your direction. They need your direction. They're loyal, they're loyal to you. They bought a policy from you. Now you have to give that back to them. And you do that by servicing. And again, guys, I understand in the beginning, you're writing business, you're building your business, okay? But if I can go back and be a new one in, in the beginning, I can assure you I would... Uh, one thing I know from back in the 90s when, when my sales career began is the endless chain of referral system. A guy named Ira Gidan came to our firm. It was actually a month before, after a Zig, Zig Ziglar came to my, the firm that I was working at. And uh, Ira Gidan... Okay, taught us the endless referral chain. You got to ask. You got to ask. Okay, if you don't ask, you don't receive. All right. So if I could go back in time and, and I probably would have been having this conversation years ago. All right. But again, we're at this point right now where we just we can service our book. I mean, just the, I, I, call, I talked to three clients yesterday. Okay. I wrote four juvies. Okay. Two critical illness policies. A final expense policy in three terms. Three clients I spoke to and their spouse and one spouse. And, and, and they gave me three referrals. All right. So I don't need the prospect. It, it would just be I'd be taking money in my pocket right now. All right. But again, we I built this this lead generation system that is just insane. So the circle of life, the circle of life of a life insurance agent. Those of you out there that that want to really go and grow your business, you got to stick to it, man. You got to. You got to go to trials and tribulations. You got to get thick skin. You got to you got to go through those motions. But I'm telling you, at the end of the tunnel, the light. Okay, you're gonna have a business that's gonna be paying you six figure in renewals, thousands of clients. Okay, that then you can start enjoying life. I mean, literally, you you, you work nine hours a day, banker hours, calling your book, and you're gonna write. I mean, in some cases, I think me and Lisa can write 15, 20 policies in one day. No doubt about it. No doubt in my mind. Okay, we got this nice system going on. And I'm going to share this. I'm going to start adding this to the master class. Again, I got a list I'm going to share with this to you right now. All right, so I don't want the video to be too long because I don't want you guys to lose interest. Okay, so, um, so I got a lot of things for you guys. Okay, um, so let's get into this.